Welcome to this month's Friends You Keep. As they say, we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And at Erin Wellness, we believe that sustainable health and wellness is an accumulation of five pillars. The thoughts you think, the friends you keep, daily movement, nutrition, and lastly, supplementation. So each month we feature guests doing exceptional things that will hopefully inspire you to step into all you are destined to be. So today I am excited to welcome Rachel Siegel to the show. Now, Rachel is a lawyer with a Master of Laws from Osgoode Hall Law School. Rachel spent many years working in policy roles in the federal political offices, including two members of parliament, the federal government house leader, the federal minister of public safety and emergency preparedness. She's also acted as a director of policy to a Canadian senator. Rachel has worked in provincial politics in both Ontario and British Columbia, as well as on campaigns at all levels of government across Canada. She has extensive broadcast experience and have a working, having worked as a full-time on-air for Canadian Television Network and as a weekly radio contributor with News Talk 1010 in Toronto and CBC in Vancouver. Rachel has most recently founded Beyond a Ballot in 2023, which I'm excited we're going to talk about that. So thank you for coming today, Rachel, and taking time. I know oh, you're yeah. busy. <laughs> I'm a little busy, but I am never too busy for you. Uh, thank you. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I want to just dive right in. Can you tell me or tell us about your journey and how it has taken you to where you are now? Yeah, I think um, the fascinating thing about my journey is that it was all kind of by accident. And and I say that because I I would say I grew up in a political household. My dad was very political in the sense that he was fixated on the news. He was in medicine. He was a physician, but he, I think he really missed his calling, uh, not running for office because he loved politics. Um, but I always grew up with politics kind of as a side narrative to my life. And um, only when I went, did my undergrad uh, in Victoria years ago now, um, I decided I was really interested in American politics. And so my undergraduate degree was really focused on American politics. And you know, Barack Obama wasn't even in the White House yet. And it was an exciting time in the U.S. as we were seeing kind of a shift in campaigning and the use of digital at the time. Um, And I remember being really fascinated by that. And uh, somebody asked me to run for student government and I dipped my toe into into that campaign. But nothing really too exciting until I met a federal minister uh, at the time at a conference. And he said, come and work for me in Ottawa. And living in British Columbia, I thought, why would I want to pack up and move to Ottawa? And I don't care about Canadian politics. So long story short, I had no other options. I really had no other job offers. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to take this one-year contract on Parliament Hill uh, and I'm going to go out there. And that really changed the course of my, my life completely because I had no intention of moving to Ontario. I had no intention of staying in Ontario. And I especially had no intention of working in Canadian politics on Parliament Hill. Mm -hmm. Um, But that ignited within me a passion uh, that kind of has driven the entire path of my life in law, media, politics. It all goes hand in hand. And since then, I've been really lucky to be on, you know, the side framing the narrative on the political side and then asking the questions on the media side. So um, I kind of had this holistic understanding of politics in really unique ways. And so that's what, and I know we're going to talk about Beyond a Ballot, but that's what ultimately has led me to this point where I've launched uh, Beyond a Ballot to try and pass on the knowledge that I have and the passion that I have for politics to other women across Canada which is definitely needed, definitely needed. I mean, I have a stat, but I'm going to share it with it later because I shared, I, I saved a stat that I got to on politi- women in politics. But, so it was kind of, you were in Ottawa and then you, you kind of dove into this position and then you just, how long did you stay in Ottawa for? Did you stay there for an extended period of time and then come back to BC? I was there on and off for about six years. And it, actually what happened was I was sitting in a committee room. So Parliament Hill I don't know if your listeners know anything about the way it operates, but every member of parliament sits on committees and they're like meetings twice a week to look at certain issues based on whatever committee it is. So my boss, my first boss was the chair of Veterans Affairs and we were looking at 
uh, the new veterans charter, which was um, kind of how the government takes care of or lack thereof, depending mm-hmm. on who you ask, uh, veterans once they come home. And I remember sitting in this committee room and looking around at these giant, beautiful uh, wall paintings of uh, Canadian provinces and former battles that Canada had been involved with and thinking, this is so much greater than I ever even anticipated and I need to figure out more. And so from there, I was determined to go to law school to understand how we write bills, how we pass bills, um, how we govern in general. And so that every part of my journey was kind of like one stepping stone after another to try and get to a place where I am the most educated on certain policy issues or just politics in general. That's amazing. Now, now we can, let's talk a little bit about Beyond the Ballot because Beyond a Ballot, sorry. And it is, one of the reasons I really love this is it's really encouraging women to start looking into politics, moving toward politics, having a better understanding. I love the mission to move women, women towards politics. Now, what, I mean, you've kind of shared a little bit what that, what that, how you came around this, but can you tell me more about this? How can women get more involved? I guess that's the big question. I mean, obviously everybody needs to go follow <laughs> beyond a ballot and, you know, make sure you're watching what you guys are up to, but how can we, can, how can we get more involved? So I have a theory that we've raised an entire generation of women. And by that generation, I mean, women aged 25 to 60, 65, uh, that have been told their entire lives that in order to be politically involved, you need to be put your name on a ballot. You need to run. And that hence the name Beyond a Ballot, um, because I think that's a really important narrative. We need more women in our legislatures, in our House of Commons, in our city halls, 100 percent. But for me, there is this knowledge gap that Canadian women lack uh, when it comes to politics. So anytime there's an issue in my experience, I would get, um, you know, any political issue. Let's take, I'm trying to think of something. I'm just going back to, I'm thinking of right now uh, what's happening with Canada and India. Mm-hmm. Um, I would get a hundred messages from women on Instagram that I would know saying, can you just explain to me what's going on? Yeah. And I slowly started to realize that there's really no resource in our market in order for women to turn and learn more. Um, so as you know, women carry uh, incredible amounts <laughs> of uh, things in their lives. I mean, we're just responsible for so much that politics usually falls pretty low on the priority list, even sometimes in my life, to be honest. But um, it's such a critical thing that we're part of because, as I say, have said many places, we engage in politics every time every day, everywhere, every Mm -hmm. time we leave the house, every time we sit on a Zoom chat or um, go to a library, that's all political decision making. Um, And so the more we know, the more we're able to engage and we're able to um, make an impact on our lives, like I'm talking the personal, but also the general community. And I think that when we look at the last few years and the impact that COVID has had and different issues around the world. I think there's a a time right now where women are feeling like they want to engage in government. They just aren't sure how to. Mm -hmm. Um, And so my my decision to launch Beyond a Ballot is really to act as that resource. And no woman is the same as any other woman. And so our goal is to really try and make politics appealing to a diverse range of women with a diverse range of um, availability or ability to engage. So, you know, that's the mom who listens to our podcast while she's walking her baby, trying to get them to go to sleep. That's the retiree who really wants to volunteer on a campaign, but isn't sure how to, um, and wants to engage with us to be placed on a campaign uh, or learn more about a candidate. Um, So, you know, we are trying to be a full life cycle organization where we help women engage from, um, you know, over the course of 40 years. And our goal is to make sure that we act as that resource without the pressure to put your name on a ballot. That's amazing. Well, I mean, I was looking at one of the stats was, so it said following the 2021 federal election, women made up 30% of the members of parliament. 
which is actually pretty good. I mean, we rank 56 in the world. Um, I'd be so curious. I didn't look this up and I should have. Do you know who number one or two is? Would that be one of the, like a Sweden, Norway type country, I wonder? Yeah, I want to say you're probably I would, right. I think well, I'm right. I'm kind of wondering. It's probably them. <laughs> I don't know Actually, it the is. really well run the really well run countries the one <laughs> yeah exactly I know that um in terms of uh, our provinces the northwest territories are number one for legislation oh, interesting and that's because they've made a massive um effort to try and engage more women uh into politics and they've changed their voting the way that they vote and so um yeah I mean, I'm not, I won't bore you with the, all the, the specifics of North, the Northwest Territories elections, which, by the way, are coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, but they are really leading the pack when it comes to uh, province, provincial legislatures. Well, and so how can we encourage more women? I mean, I guess, obviously, one of the things I think that would seem daunting to myself or has seemed daunting to myself is, is you want to have an opinion on a topic, mm -hmm. but you're not sure exactly if if you know enough to have an opinion on a topic, right? I think that's where probably, you know, encouraging women to obviously go to beyond a ballot, listen to the podcast. Cause a lot of women, as you said, don't have time to read. My mom reads a newspaper front to back, like every day she's yeah. devout newspaper reader. I, am awesome. not, I don't have time. Maybe when I'm 70, I will, yeah. um, but I guess looking and go, turning in and going to your website as well on your website. Do you have do you have information that kind of breaks, I guess, the Coles Notes version of what's going down in each uh, kind of political issue? Yeah. So I'll just put it out there. We're only four weeks old beyond yeah. about it. Yeah. So um, we have a five year plan to include um, a, a full education portal where women can go on and learn the ABCs of politics. I mean, Amazing. Most people ask me how we elect a prime minister in this country. And when I get that question, I often think like, wow, we're failing not only women, but Canadians in general, just not understanding how we even do that. So um, just a side note, we don't elect a prime minister. We elect parties and the party with the most seats, their leader becomes the prime minister, unlike the United States, states where we're often compared to. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I think if you talk to me a year from now, my hope is that we will have educate more education product, more media products. We're planning to launch more podcasts that all focus on different areas aside from our current podcasts. Um, we're looking at doing in-person and memberships. Um, mm -hmm. We're looking at doing a, a national caucus, which is what a caucus is when a, a political team meet, uh, and by team, I mean party. So every Wednesday in Ottawa, there's um, caucus meetings. The first half of the day is just caucus. And the House of Commons actually doesn't sit until 2 p.m. on Wednesdays. Um, so that word is is very much like a masculine dominant word. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. And I want to reframe it. And I want to make it the political party of the year somewhere in Canada yeah. with just women from all walks of life and all political backgrounds and understanding coming together because it's never been done. We've never brought multi-partisan conversation women together somewhere in this country. And so that's my ultimate dream. Um, but we need a little bit of time to get there. Love On you. our website, to answer your question, I do have um, something called shorts. And those are just really short breakdowns of words you might hear in news stories. So we elected a new speaker. Um, what does that, what is the speaker of the House of Commons? I mean, I know that, but everyone should. Yeah, and no, so you're right. Try and impart that. I think that's such, I mean, what a great resource you're creating. I totally commend you. I think this is something I know I will refer to. And I know even my daughter, right? I mean, I know she has questions. And even though she's in school, I think, like, I think back when I learned about all this and even the political parties, I mean, I had to ask my mom, I remember years ago being like, can you give me a breakdown with the differences between each party? <laughs> because, because I never really paid attention. I didn't really care. Right. I was just kind of going on in my life. And then as I got older, when, especially after I had my daughter, I'm like, wait a second, this stuff actually matters because it's going to determine what's going on in my country. Then I began caring a lot more, but I agree with you. We need to get women and men, but since we're talking more women here, we want women to become more engaged and, and feel more comfortable in having dialogue about different policies or different things that are going on in government. So they don't kind of slide back, but they lean into it, right? And lean into, mm -hmm. is that Brene Blunt or is that 
Elizabeth Gilbert, one of them talks about leaning into it. <laughs> so, so you've launched the podcast Beyond a Ballot. I know it's, I know it is new. So everybody can go listen to that one too. Is that on Apple and Spotify? Where do you guys have yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So what can listeners expect on that? Do you guys, what are you guys chatting about? So my co-host is the most amazing woman uh, and she inspires me every day. Her name is Amanda Alvaro and she is, she comes from the uh, liberal camp. I worked in the Harper government, so conservative. Um, and she is a PR powerhouse based in Toronto, although I'll say she's nationally recognized. Um, and she's also the, one of the most passionate, eloquent speakers and educators when it comes to politics. She was my dream partner on this. Um, and the minute I approached her about it, she was like, let's do it. And and we've just moved full force with Beyond a Ballot um, hand in hand, really. And so our podcast is, like I said, the first podcast product that we put out. Uh, it launched three days after the company. But mm -hmm. Amanda and I every week cover politics differently. So a couple of weeks ago, our second episode was at what we were calling a dinner party. And the hope is that eventually we'll get enough funding that we can actually host a dinner party. Of that. Um, yeah, of just women that love politics. And we talked about Parliament resuming and some of the issues that were happening at the time. Um, and every week is a different setup. So it depends what's happening in the news, what's happening with Amanda or I. Um, you know, we had a massive shift in government in Manitoba recently, yeah. and um, I had the new incoming premier's new principal secretary, a young, exciting woman who just got promoted to like the right hand of the premier. And um, she came on and, and talked to me about about Wab Canoe, who's the, the premier elect. Uh, and it's just an, it, it's exciting. There's so many women that are working in these in this field and um that are not running but still running the show mm -hmm. um and so it's great to be able to have these conversations that i normally would have amongst friends and amanda and i've talked about this um but now we're having it amongst tons of friends yeah uh, across canada and like I said, our goal is to try and have a touch point with as many women as possible. Um, and so we're adapting, we're trying things out, we're seeing what works. And that's in order to engage women, different women uh, into the conversation. So now, besides getting women involved in politics, <laughs> is there a cause um, something that's really close to your heart right now. I mean, I know there's so many things going on right now in Canada, government wise, but is there a cause that's closest to your heart? And what would that be? Um, like a policy? Yeah, policy. Okay, so I'm a huge nerd when it comes to <laughs> our criminal justice system. Yeah. Uh, I have a master's in law uh, with a focus on criminal law. And that was because I was working for the federal minister of public safety overseeing corrections and parole board. Um, and I think that even right now, there's a huge narrative when it comes to parole in this country. Uh, most people, I never talk about this because most people are like criminal justice, but it's such a complex policy area and it's such an impactful policy area. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we don't realize when we wake up in the morning just how many people in this country are impacted by the criminal justice system. And when we get it wrong, people get hurt. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I think understanding the balance and with my background in both legal and political, that is like a huge Venn diagram when it comes to the criminal justice system. So I'm always passionate about looking at our laws, the way that we legislate uh, crime or illegality in Canada. Um, but most people don't want me to do a deep dive on. No, I think that's fascinating. Offenders. <laughs> so would you want to go in and and would it be stuff like overhauling um, the time people get or would it would just it's there's just so many other I mean there's obviously a lot to it not just the one thing I think that there's so many questions and it's such it's so unique to the government of the day there's like really big differences and you know we you talk about differentiating political parties I think you're right in Canada we're kind of lucky to have pretty close alignment on most policy issues. I think that criminal justice and um, 
criminal justice reform are bigger divisions amongst our parties in Canada. Um, and so just through my own personal interest in the study of criminal law um, and having had a bit of experience working with a, a criminal defense firm and then more on the government side with the Minister of Public Safety, again, going back to my ability to see to have experience on both sides of that. Mm. Um, I think that's what, in another life, I would go back and just do criminal law full time or criminal you, policy. <laughs> would you ever, would you ever actually run for politics? Like would you ever run for political party? Is that something? Definitely. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I always get asked this question. Is, is it not a dead giveaway to people? I, I would love to be, and I'll tell you. Then you will. Also, well, I've got to find a seat I can win first, but um, I, I would love, it's not so much about, you know, I would love to be a legislator. I, I think having ha having experience actually writing legislation in both British Columbia and federally um, has been amazing, but to be the, the politician sitting there and passing it or debating it would be an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. I also am dying to be the candidate on a campaign because it's the only role pretty much that I haven't played on a campaign. <laughs> I'd love to be the one knocking on the doors, yeah, and having people with me that are, are staffers um, that, that are messaging me instead. Uh, I think that would be a really awesome for me. Love that. Okay. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> so not only are you, you know, busy, busy, busy with your beyond a ballot, you also do television. Um, you are a new mom to a five month old. And I didn't realize you also have a two year old as well. I do. Oh my I do. gosh. You I can't love... forget the toddler. Let me tell no, you. No, no, you can. No, they won't let you. Trust me. I've had, you know, mine was three at one time, two, three. Yeah. One of my favorite ages because they're really kind of becoming their own little people. But mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for the listeners on how to keep, and I'm going to do bunny ears with this, balanced? Do you have any advice for women? I love this question because every woman that is quote unquote balanced is like killing themselves laughing at it. <laughs> it's not possible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we hear this all the time, but I'm just going to reiterate it for those that need to hear it today. And that is balance is not possible, um, but doing your best is. And I, you know, I have tons of help, tons, tons, um, family help. We have an incredible nanny that comes in and helps us as well. Um, but it's, it's just a lot of coordination mm -hmm. and a lot. Of, I kind of live by the, the line. If you want something done, ask a busy person. I yeah. do thrive uh, I with more. Yeah. So, I do yeah. Maybe I'll ha end up having like 10 kids because of that, because I do much better. <laughs> but, you know, launching a company in uh, with a three month old was not ideal. But the idea for this company actually was born in my first math leave a couple of years ago. Uh, and to the credit of my partner, Amanda, she really I went showed up at her office and said, I'm pregnant. And she said, OK, like whatever you need. So we had to put a little pause on beyond a ballot. Um, but I think it's just support and the community that I have as well. Like I'm not going to discredit the number of women that I talk to every day through social media or through um, a different community events that say to me, like, we love this. How can we help? And and mm -hmm. they do. And it, whether or not that help is like helping me draft something for the, the website that breaks something down, or um, I have a dear friend uh, in Toronto who every time I'm driving to CBC on my TV days, um, I go over all the stories with her and she's a political strategist, but she's oh, amazing. That's yeah, amazing. So just tons of help in tons of different ways is, is the key. And I think utilizing your community um, and the strengths of other people to help you kind of find that quote unquote balance is key. And what day? So Wednesdays, because we haven't mentioned this one. So Wednesday, you're on CBC. And what time? At uh, three forty Pacific, six forty okay. Eastern. I I am part of a panel on power and politics, which is their signature political show. So it just allows me to really nerd out every Wednesday and talk. It's uh, a, a reporter from Montreal, Nahed Nanchi, uh, the former mayor yep. of Calgary, um, and so we just Easter. get to. 
yeah, we just get to chat politics for half an hour every Wednesday. And when did this start? When did that one start? Um, I think three days before Beyond a Ballot, maybe a week before Beyond a Ballot was launched. You're just actually. birthing left, right, and centered. You know what? They, <laughs> but, they asked me to do it months ago when I was like goodness. nine months pregnant. And I like, they also give me a month. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah. You know, I'm going to birth everything. I'm just going to just exactly. create. Creating. You're on a creating rampage. I love that. <laughs> That's right. But you know what? It's such a joy for me also because it's like oh, the yeah. one day a week where I have to wash my hair and <laughs> pretend that I understand what going on in the world and it's great it's a good, good adult yeah exactly I know when I had Michaela even I remember I didn't take a mat leave when I had Michaela I actually stayed uh-huh. working I didn't yeah. keep the coast I was working for a bigger company at the time I just kept the interior BC I'd like four stores here on the coast and I would put I would take her with me go into the stores with a stroller yeah. hand them the you know monthly specials but it gave me a chance to kind of still feel like myself like I still had yeah. part of me and I'm glad, I mean, it worked really well for me. Not everybody can do that, but I really enjoy that because I still felt, yeah, I still felt like there's a little bit of part of me because I, yeah. so I like to be busy. I'm the, very much the same as you. Yeah. The more stuff I have, the more lists I have. It's like, yeah. I get this, it's like an anxious feeling, but I love it. It's just like this, yeah, yeah. like, I feel like I just want to explode. I'm so excited to do all these things. Totally. Yes. And then if I get to cross them off, it's like, next level. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I want to have you on my podcast to talk about your balance because you're the one of the hardest workers I've ever seen oh, and you. balancing a lot of things as well. So yeah. we're all out there trying to do it. Well, it was I had Paulina Cameron on and yeah. I really loved her analogy about balance was, and she said, balance for her is being present in exactly what she's doing. And that's how she feels balanced. So when she's with her kids, she's mm-hmm. all in with her kids. Right. And when she's at work, she's all in at work. And I was like, oh, that's such a good way. But I still, I mean, I still be with my kid and, you know, doing emails, but that's <laughs> like, yeah. life, right? right. It is yeah. it's totally. Paulina is a dear, dear friend of mine. I, amazing. I, I admire nobody more than her. I know. I right. Her. And yeah. Uh, it's, she is the backbone of so many of us that are in this entrepreneurial life and yeah. just like keeping us together and answering crazy calls when I'm, Saying I don't want to go to Toronto and leave my children. She's like, go. <laughs> you can do. So do yeah, any, anything she she says, I I take as gospel. Definitely. I would do. I know. I was. She was great to have on the show. So I've got some fast fire questions. All right. Ooh. One. Where do you see yourself in five years? As the global CEO of Beyond a Ballot. That for you. Plus, yeah. fighting for politics. <laughs> Uh, I, don't a, I don't know if there'll be a seat for me in five years, but we'll see. <laughs> um, what is one thing you would tell your 20 year old self? Hmm. Take every opportunity that's presented to you. Mm-hmm. And I think I've generally followed that, but I, I hope to, that I instill that in my children also. Sometimes mm-hmm. they don't work out, but sometimes they do. And, you know, if I had never met that minister at a conference, I yeah. who knows where I'd be. Right. Not in politics, that's for sure. Um, what inspires you? My children. Yeah. <laughs> I have two girls and yeah. I almost feel like the world gave me two girls because I need to make it better for them. Yeah. Um, I even, you know, doing television five months postpartum, it's hard. It's really uh, hard. 100%. And why do I do it? Because at the end of the day, my two-year-old says, I watched your meeting, which is <laughs> all my TV appearances. And I want them to see that they don't have to fall within the confines of like what a mother or an entrepreneur or a woman in general falls into. I want yeah. them to define their own path. and. So I kind of need to, I need to do that myself. And that's what drives my passion for all of this stuff. Love that. All right. So thank you so much, Rachel, for being on with me today. And we, before we wrap up, we want to know where everybody can find you. I know we've mentioned Beyond About a lot, but please just do it one more time so everybody can know where to go. Beyondaballot.com. And also our podcast can be found on Spotify. Uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts, we're probably there. And uh, new episodes come out every Friday morning. So 
don't forget to subscribe. And then Instagram. Oh, Instagram at Rachel Siegel or at Beyond About It. There we go. And we will link everything as well to the interview. Thank you so much once again for coming on. Much appreciated. And thank you everybody for listening today. I hope you all have an incredible day and stay tuned next month where we have another incredible person doing incredible things on the friends you keep. 